Chicken farm, chicken farm. First of all, Happy New Year, it's 2022, and we find ourselves still looking for meat because the grocery stores is slim pickings. And obviously it's been a while since we posted, so apologize for that. So if you're just watching this for the first time, be sure to subscribe. And for all you subscribers, we're back. And we're on Susie's Ridge, and it's begun a new chapter because it's 2022, and right at the end of the season here in Georgia, my son had a chance to pop a few does. So we're up here cutting them up, having fun, and we're trying to make sure we got plenty of supplies that get us through the next deer season. So we're gonna go into Susie's Ridge, and we're gonna go in here, and we're gonna grind a full deer. So we've got a tub of meat, and obviously we got one of the deer late behind us that we still got to cut up, the skin out that's ready to go. But we're going to show you, in our opinion, some different varieties of grind meat that you can put into your freezer, depending on if you want some beef fat or if you want it very lean. So obviously, whoever is watching this based on your needs, this is what we go about doing when we're adding beef fat or in some cases, straight cubed venison or straight grind venison. Y'all, come on. Here's the grinder we're using that Meet Your Maker makes. If you go to meetyourmaker.com, it'll give you a list of prices and different kinds of equipment. I love this grinder right here. My buddy Stevie right here, who's cut meat all across the country, has been really tickled with it. And what I like about being able to handle your own meat is the fact that obviously you're the one touching. Here's some that we got prepared in here that we're gonna grind. This is just pure venison that we have deboned off the dough that my son Waylon shot. We got it like we want it based on what we've had history with that we like. Not a lot of fat, just a little bit. Now, what I like about grinding it yourself, if you want to and you want a straight, lean venison grind, you cannot have to add any beef fat whatsoever. So obviously if you get your deer processor, a meat processor or a deer processor, they'll do it like you want. 90% of the time, if I do that, I ask for cube and grind. However, just as a note, if you don't ask for beef fat, they're gonna grind your deer just pure venison. So if you ask for beef fat, it's gonna drive the price up. So you can buy beef fat at your local grocery store and a lot of different places. You can even buy it online. And so what we do, in some cases, for instance, my wife, she likes a clean, straight venison grind for her chili and a lot of times for her vegetable soup. For me, I like a little beef fat because one is, Beef fat is delicious. Let's face it, if you ever eat a ribeye, you know how delicious beef fat is. But I also add it for making burgers. So what we're gonna do is to go ahead and show you how this grinder works, number one. And also we're gonna add some different beef fat. And so by rule, Stevie, uh, what do y'all typically do? He works in a deer process place. If you add, what's your average ratio of beef fat to venison meat that you would add? The average rate that we use here would be two pounds of fat to 10 pounds of meat. Now, most of your deer coolers, because they're, they're doing a lot more meat at a time, is usually 15 pounds of meat to seven pounds of fat. I got you. So for your purest, a lot of times you start adding any kind of fat to any deer meat. A lot of people are like, dude, you don't add nothing, man. Straight organic, pure meat, which deer meat is organic. Obviously, you saw this on my son shot. We brought him here, gutted him, skinned him, and now we got him, you know, parts of him in this bucket here. However, the beauty, regardless of what some macho man will tell you, once you get him to this place, he's yours. If you want to make sausage, if you want to add some pork fat and make some great deer venison sausage, you can. Or if you want to make some delicious ribeye trimmings, throw it in this grinder and I'll put you an unbelievable patty burger. When it comes out, a lot of cases, I'll go ahead and patty them up. I might even add some onions, I might add some seasoning to it. And when I got them for a get together or my kids are here and they're ready for a good burger, Guess what? I don't have to go to the grocery store and buy ground round and different things or get the frozen sirloin burgers. I've got it right here. So I add in those cases a little ribeye fat or some beef fat and it makes for a great burger. So if you don't want that and you want to go straight organic and the reason you've got this is because you want straight organic meat, it's super simple. Grind it up, shrink wrap it, and you're ready to go. But uh, we're going to go ahead and show you how this grinder works and get to going. Here's some beef fat. This is we bought from the local grocery store down the road, and that's just straight beef fat. It's in little pellets, and we're gonna add, like Stevie said, we'll add about a pound to 10 pounds. So depending on how you wanna do it, sometimes we'll even grind a little bit and add very little beef fat. We'll throw it on the grill and say how we like it. So I would say don't put too much because 
it defeats the purpose of why you're going to be eating venison anyway and also the the reason your heart doctor tell you to eat more venison so i add a lot of times just enough beef fat to give it a little flavor but mainly to keep the meat stuck together if i'm trying to grill it so the beef fat is mainly to help the substance of the meat stick together when i'm trying to grill it to make a cheeseburger so So we got right at three pounds in the stainless bowl. So for that ratio, he was talking about that two pounds of beef fat for 10 pounds of meat. In this case, we're approximately gonna put in about a half a pound of beef fat. So you can do this a lot of different ways. We just measure out our venison first, which that's right at three pounds. Stevie will jump that in, and then I'll just put some beef fat. We only want about, in this case, we only want about a half a pound of beef fat. So that's four. We'll leave it at that. That's about a little over eight ounces, which is close to half a pound of beef fat. So you can do a lot of different ways. You can mix your beef up in a tumbler with the fat. Um, when you're using the grinder, you know, you know, Stevie, for instance, likes to use his beef fat on the side. And he'll put his beef fat He'll put his beef fat and just kind of get it to one side and actually put his beef fat, say, on this side. And then with your tool, you can kind of rake it in as you go and get a good even mix. So depends on how you want to do it. There's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. But the coolest thing about this whole process, it's yours and you can do it however you want to. You can go with the rule of thumb of how you mix meat and add beef fat. So your first batch or two, you're gonna realize, man, I got a little too rich in beef fat. Or you might realize you like venison with no fat in it. So let it be yours, and that's the beauty of these products. You can, it's yours, you can do it how you want to. You know what, if you, if you add it a little rich and you don't like it as good, well, you know next time to add a little less. So to your family's taste, to your taste, that's the way you can do it, and that's what I love about it. And what I like about this, look at this beautiful cuts of meat. We'll cube this, but we're gonna leave that to another conversation. Right now, we're gonna work on some great grind. And what I love about it, the only people that have touched this deer is me and Stevie. I know every morsel of it, and my son shot it. What an unbelievable pride factor is when we sit down for a good burger or some good deer chili that I can talk to my five-year-old son and say, boy, this is the deer that you provided for the family. So let's fire this sucker up and let's grind it out. We're gonna show you what kind of product. Well, So just like that, that's three pounds of fresh ground venison burger with about the perfect ratio, in our opinion, of beef fat. That right there make a good burger. It'd be great for chili. It'd be great for anything that you desire. And I promise you, unless you tell them, there ain't a single person or guest that'll come over that will say they're eating deer meat. Now, if you want to just grind it clean, you can do that too. But that's the ratio we just talked about. That's about a half a pound of beef fat per three pounds of meat. We'll take that now and we'll put it in these bags. We'll shrink wrap it, we'll date it, and we're ready to go. Put it in your freezer and it will keep a long, long time. So, true organic meat. In this case, we added just a little bit of beef fat. But if you want to be independent, if you want to be self-sufficient, I'm telling you, hunting and fishing and using those renewable resources and bringing them into your kitchen, into your home shop, into a cooler that you might have uh, an opportunity to use, there's nothing better and I promise you, you'll be tickled to death with it. Another thing I found, too, in this case, this bag is a little big for what I'm doing, is, but I like, I found about the perfect, in this case, See, I got about two pounds right there, and that's probably a pound left. 
I like to put my venison in two pound bags because what I found with two pounds, that is a perfect for a good average uh, pot of chili. If you're packing your shelf itself and shrink wrapping it, two pounds is perfect. In a lot of cases, if it's just me and my wife, I'll also package me up some pound uh, you know, bags. And that way for your average meal, let's say your hamburger helper that you buy, it usually calls for a pound, double the, the, the recipe. In my case, I got five kids, a big family. So pound to two to three pound bags is what I do. And it gives me an equal opportunity. I can label it here how much it weighs. And therefore, when I'm thawing out meat, depending on who's coming over, I know what to do. Typically, if it's just my wife and I, I'm pulling out the pound. Or if it's a pound, I can double it. And in this case, that's about two pounds of ground meat right there that we'll package up. Be ready to go. Pound, pound and a half. And like I said, it ain't got to be perfect. That's two bags. And they make smaller bags, but I'll show you how this sucker works. This is probably the handiest, dandiest. So simple. You throw it in, it pulls all the air out of it, it seals it, and it locks it in. If you want to use it in two days after you throw it in the freezer, it's good to go. If you use it a year later, it's still good to go. So very simple, unbelievably efficient. This whole product line that Meet Your Maker got out of some of the best I've, I've seen, and, uh, and I love it. And I got great pride in being able to have some of these animals put in these bags and to thaw them out and tell the story around the dinner table, especially when my five-year-old's the one who got it. She is ready to go. Shrink wrapped, sealed, and ready to go. So all I gotta do there is label that, throw it in the freezer, pound and three quarter to two pounds of ground deer venison with a little beef fat. Look out! I'll get, I'll get some more then. We'll do a, we'll do a big, big bag. Here's another beauty of this, uh, being able to uh, handle your own meat right here. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take this ground beef, especially that that I put enough beef fat in that I want for a burger, and I'll go ahead for my family and pre-make me a couple burgers. You can make them the size that you like. If you even have your favorite seasoning, you can go ahead and, and put, that, put that in there. But what I always do is make a couple pretty good size ones. For instance, my son Waylon, he's five. He usually ain't as a bigger burger, but I'll always patty up me a couple that's just a little smaller for Waylon. So, depending on how you want for daddy, for mama, you know, and everybody likes the burgers a different thickness, but I'll always do something like that. That way I got a little small burger for the kids. And that way, when you got kids and kids over, you ain't got no big, huge, whopping patty that for me, I hate wasted food. I grew up, you clean your plate, but a kid ain't gonna eat a bigger burger like that. But you throw some cheddar cheese, Maybe just some Worcestershire sauce, some different seasoning on that with that beef fat and that fine organic booger bottom dough. Obviously a grown man like me have no problem put that between two pieces of bread, some lettuce, some fresh onions and fresh tomato. But my five year old ain't gonna eat that. So I'll make the kids up a little smaller. And when I thaw them out, I'm ready to go. I got some for the kids. And I got some for the adults. So in this case, I'll take and I'll make me two bags. I'll have one shrink wrap for the kids and one for some grown man burgers right there. You ready to go. Just another cool thing about handling your own meat. Here's what's cool too. You ain't got to weigh these burgers. You know, you go to a restaurant and you get you, you know, however so many ounces burger patty. Man, you can make them as big and as little as you want. Depending on how sparingly you want to make them, you're ready to rock. Make a couple more of these little ones. And you might think, well, it ain't no big deal. Why, why would you go ahead and patty them up? Here's the thing, man. If you get home and your wife or you, you get home from work, 
When you patty burgers, you're gonna get your hands all greasy and nasty. Obviously, most people don't care about that. But you come home from work, it's kind of the cool thing about a bubble burger. I love those. That product is you jump, throw them on the grill. Here, you thaw this out, pull them out of the pack, throw them on the grill, and you're ready to go. You ain't gotta sit there and let me thaw out and then prepare it. Then you can throw your seasoning, whatever sauce, whatever dry seasoning you want, or nothing at all. So while you're doing this with your buddies, a lot of times we do this, we'll have cold beverages flowing out there. A lot of times we'll have the grill fired up and something like this, we'll throw on the grill right now and go ahead and eat. We can throw them out for lunch or we can have lunch as we're cooking. And so there's so many cool things when you got the product and you got this equipment. And again, there is no perfect way to do it. You do it the way you like it. And that's what I love. You don't have to be influenced other than different advice that people have because they have been doing their meat. You can talk to your local processor. You can go and talk to the place that you buy your burgers from that maybe you like at a local market. And you can ask him, you know, hey, what is this? What is that? What's this cut of meat? And they'll tell you. Then when you get a deer, and the cool thing about it, let's say you have a local farmer that'll sell you a cow or a pig. You want to raise it up with this equipment? It doesn't matter if it's a deer or domestic animal that you raised for the slaughter to use for your family. The same equipment will prepare that as well. So you just learn a lot. And uh, anytime, even though we hunt a lot and we love mounting these animals, when you have a chance to prepare all the way from figuring out how to understand how to get an arrow or a bullet in one of these animals to getting it to here, to the table, there's something about that whole scenario from field to table that just gives you such a respect, not only for the animal, but appreciation, understanding that you can survive if you understand the ways of the wild and understand that the good Lord put all these renewable resources out here for us. And even in the grocery store, the same process that could be offending some of y'all for seeing this deer hung on the skinning pole to here, they have to put that same process in place even on domestic meats like chicken, pork, beef. And for you vegans who may be watching this that's going to add a hate comment, guess what? No sympathy for you either that you're an anti-hunter or a PETA that hate me because frankly, you kill way more shit than I do. For them to make your lettuce, they got a freaking farm, they got to pulverize the ground, every mole, every ground squirrel, every rat, everything that flies over, they have to make sure that they protect your kale, your lettuce, and your vegetables so they have to, something has to die. Probably more things had to die. As Ted Nugent says it, this animal, one bullet, one animal. One bullet, one animal, here he is. You killed hundreds of animals, hundreds of animals, so you could decide you didn't want to kill an animal. So the hypocrisy is complete ignorant. And so with that, what you didn't kill by plowing, by pulverizing, they come in there with some unbelievable chemical and damn sure nuked everything. So guess what? This is more the good Lord's way of going about it, in my personal opinion. And guess what? I still like a little artichoke, maybe some collard greens. I like it with my deer venison or my beef or my chicken. So somebody who is going against this don't understand the balance. And any time they get in a debate, they're going to realize how ignorant they are on losing that battle because I've killed a lot less here. But you can't go with the anti-hunting, I'm vegan because I don't want to kill nothing. You kill way more animals than I did with this one bullet, one animal. How about this? This is why you do your own meat. Boom! Celebrate that. My five-year-old got this dough. Me and Stevie have put it all the way into the freezer farm. Now how proud is he going to be when he's feeding his brothers and his sister and his mama? Some of these old hamburger patties when we thaw them out, whether it's this summer, 4th of July, or whether it's in a couple days. That's why you can have a chance to do your own meat. And this is a celebration right here. Complete field all the way to the table, or at least to the processor right here that we ground up with the Meet Your Maker uh, deer grinder right here, or grinder. And this is why we do these type things. And I appreciate you guys for watching. Y'all be sure to tune in and subscribe. And we're going to get some more coming at you. Country living at its best. Spitting it real, showing you it real. For right now, we got some real deer burger and a shrink wrap ready for the feast. Boom.